Hey there folks, Mr. G here with another educational video. This time we're going to be talking about chemical properties. So last time we talked about physical properties including density, now we're going to talk about chemical properties which is kind of the other type of properties that matter can have. I want to remind everyone that if you want hard copies of these notes to fill out, um, I encourage you to print them off on your own, but if you don't have a printer, come by during flex time to our room, which is A100, for hard copies of all of the notes in the worksheets. And if you haven't picked up your uh, workbook yet, make sure that you pay for it and then you can show up to our room and pick it up as well. This is going to be page number two and the date is going to be November 20th. Make sure you put that up at the top so you don't lose anything and you keep it all in order in that binder that you're keeping. So in this one we're thinking about a chemical property and we've got two things, flesh of an apple turning brown and copper wire that can be bent. This second one we've actually already talked about. Number two is actually a property we talked about yesterday, a physical property called malleability. But the first one is a chemical property because something new is being formed. So the fact that our apple is turning brown when it's exposed to air, that tells us that some sort of reaction is taking place and something new is being formed, that brown layer. That's the really key indication of a chemical reaction, is that something new is getting formed here. A chemical property um, is the ability of matter to react with another substance to form one or more new substances. And this is the key thing. We're forming new substances when we react with another thing. So when our apple is exposed to air, it reacts with air. So the apple and the air react together, and they form this brown layer on top of the apple. Some common examples of chemical properties, there's ones down here and you can look at page 118 to help fill in the blanks. Uh, combustibility is the ability for something to catch fire and burn when exposed to oxygen, so wood, a natural gas, propane, um, basically anything that's flammable, it needs to have oxygen to burn, and this is a chemical reaction, so this would be a chemical property if something can burn. So for instance wood can burn, but stone and other types of metal maybe don't burn so easily. Reactivity with acids, so how much a substance reacts with acid, so baking soda and vinegar, you might have done this in elementary school, you get quite a reaction there, lots of bubbles and foam being formed. But some other things might not react with acids. If you pour water into acid, there's no reaction. Reactivity with oxygen, so how something reacts with oxygen, so avocados uh, making that brown substance, same with our apples. Um, so if something like that's reacting with oxygen, um, that's another example of a chemical property. Uh, some other things like um, certain types of metal don't react with oxygen. Um, other things like that might, uh, there's lots of other things that don't react with oxygen. Um, but one very common thing is fruit and vegetables will form that sort of brown layer. Um, reactivity with other elements, really the key here is the reaction. And that's what we had in our definition. We're looking for a reaction that creates something new. There's also a chemical property called being inert. So that's something that does not react with other substances. Helium's a great example of this. So it, helium, even though it's a gas, doesn't burn, doesn't react with acids, doesn't really do any reactions with anything. It just kind of hangs around. And that's something that we would call inert. So what's the main difference between physical and chemical? Chemical properties involve uh, a reaction. Again, this reaction and making new substances. Well, physical properties don't involve changing the substance. So if we think about an example that we had at the top here, malleability, right? We're not changing the identity of the substance. We're not changing the copper wire into a different type of metal when we bend it. We're just changing the shape. So when we talk about the identity, we're talking about the type of substance that we had. Now this can be tricky to tell. Um, and you'll get more experience as you try some of these questions. But if you go back to our previous notes, all about physical properties, none of those properties involve the substance changing in any way um, in terms of its identity. So even though malleability, we can change the shape, we're not changing the type of wire. It's still copper. Why is melting point not a chemical property? When you melt something, the identity of the substance doesn't change. For instance, when you melt uh, ice into water, it's still water. Right? Even the, all it is is frozen water to liquid water, um, it stays as water the whole time. So it's not changing the identity, we're not changing what substance we have, the substance stays water the whole time. Our question three here, we're looking at some observations that a student made and he wants to, they want to try and figure out which of these four metals it is. So the observations is that it bends easily, it's shiny, it gets darker within a few minutes, 
after I clean the surface, and we have a density over here as well. So now we want to figure out what the likely identity of the metal is. Well, our first one bends easily. This is related to malleability. And this means that it's malleable. So if we look at our examples here, zinc's not malleable, so that crosses this one out. Shiny, this is where, this is uh, luster, or how lustrous something is, how shiny it is. All of our materials are lustrous, so that doesn't actually help us. It gets darker within a few minutes after I clean the surface. So what that tells us is that it reacts with the air, so it reacts with oxygen. So when we clean off a layer um, of the surface, it's going to react with the oxygen. So if we look at here, these two don't react. This one does, so we can cross out those two. And the density of 8.0 grams per centimeter, well, we look at it and think, well, it's not exactly 8, but it's close. Um, and we'll get back to that in a minute. So it's close, but not quite right. And likely this is due to some experimental errors. So maybe the lab equipment wasn't working properly. Maybe they made some mistakes in their measurements or calculations. Um, there's lots of different reasons why the density might be different. Um, so was it accurate? It's not accurate. When we're talking about accurate, is this the right number? So the idea of accuracy is did they get the right number? Not really. It's quite different. It's almost uh, a whole number off. Eight versus nine almost. Is it very precise? Um, so not actually that precise. Precise just not is the number of decimal places. So our table had two decimal places, they only had one, so it's not that precise. They have one less decimal place than the table did, so it's not, it's not very precise. And why is it important to use more than one property? Well, we kind of went through it. By going through all these other properties, we could cross out these ones and be left with copper. And even if our density was a little bit off, right? If we were just looking at the density, we could have said that it was zinc or cobalt, right? Both of these other ones are pretty close to eight. But notice how by having all of these other uh, properties, we were able to match up the correct one and be very confident in our answer. Um, and it allows for some errors in, the, in our measurements. By taking a lot of data, we can look at the one that fits best, even if some of our measurements aren't exact. And were the observations complete? Um, could we have any other ideas about it? Well, there's lots of other things we could have recorded. Lots of other physical characteristics, like the color, shape, smell, texture, state, hardness. These are all things that we talked about uh, last time, different types of physical characteristics. We could have recorded the size and mass, um, but they just told us the density. Um, uh, so we don't know exactly how they got that, um, but they definitely could have recorded those observations to make them more complete. That's the end of our video here. Make sure that you check Teams for all of the daily homework, assignments, readings, and everything else, and I will see you all in the next video.